from our friend Justin Brierly, go check out his podcast called Unbelievable. Now it's time for RTB 101. And this is where we help to train you to share your faith more effectively. And here once again to help us talk about a very important question that many of our young earth creationist friends raise is Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome back, Fuzz. Good to be with you, Krista. You know, Fuzz, many of my Christian friends who are young earth creationists, they often have a concern about an issue called animal death before the fall. Maybe you can start by telling us a little bit more about that concern and, and where it comes from. Yeah, well, when you look at the, um, the fall of human beings that's described in Genesis 3, uh, you, you see as a consequence of that fall that human beings died spiritually, that we were separated from God as a result of Adam and Eve's rebellion. And as a consequence, Adam and Eve also not only died spiritually, but ultimately physically, because they were denied access to the tree of life. And so many young earth creationists, in fact, many Christians would argue that as a result of Adam's fall, death entered into creation. And this included not only death for human beings, but death for animals and plants as well. And so they see a change in the cosmos as a result of the fall. And, and they, they struggle to envision a world that they would call good where there was animal death prior to the fall. And so they argue that to say that, that um, death entered into the creation as part of the original creation would essentially impugn God's character. How could God be good? How could the creation be good if animals would suffer and would experience pain and then ultimately die? Thanks. That's very helpful. Now, one of the things that I'm thinking about is that reasons to believe we are old earth creationists. So we accept the conventional age for the earth. So when we go out into the record of nature, maybe you can describe what kind of evidence that we see for animals dying before humans. Yeah, well, if you are an old earth creationist, then you accept the fact that there has been life present on earth for 3.8 billion years. And that means there's also been death that has been part of uh, earth and life's history as well for 3.8 billion years. And uh, the evidence for this is, first of all, the fossil record uh, that clearly shows life being present for this period of time. But we also see things in the fossil record like mass extinction events. Uh, that are oftentimes coupled to mass origination events. But nevertheless, we do see these instances where environmental catastrophes triggered the loss of huge amounts of plant and animal species on the planet. But then we also see huge amounts of biodeposits, things like coal, natural gas, tar, uh, uh, oil. Uh, the, the, the amount of these deposits is incredibly vast, and these are deposits that are derived from the decayed, uh, the, on, on, from organisms that died and then underwent a decay process. And the vast amount of biodeposits is so extensive, there's no way you could account for it through the result of some kind of recent global flood uh, uh, that happened only a few thousand years ago. So the, the preponderance of evidence indicates that life has been present on Earth and that death has been part of, of life's history on Earth for 3.8 billion years. So that leads me to the next question, which I know is a question of concern for many of my Christian friends. And that is, what does the Bible say? Because the Bible is our authority. So does it have anything to say about animal death before the fall of Adam and Eve? Um, is that seen as evil? Is, is there even any connection between Adam's sin and animal death? Yeah, well, I mean, as an old earth creationist, I would, like my young earth uh, brothers and sisters, affirm that as a result of the fall, human beings died spiritually, we died physically, that the fall introduced into the creation human death. But there's absolutely nothing in scripture that says that there was no animal death prior to the fall. In fact, you actually see the opposite being taught in scripture. Uh, for example, there are passages like Psalm 104 or Job 38 and 39. These are all creation accounts where God is being praised for his work as creator. And in all of these accounts, we see 
uh, God being described as being responsible for creating predator prey relationships, for creating uh, carnivores, for providing uh, uh, prey for the predators, and that God is celebrated and to be worshiped because of that. That is, it looks as if animal death was part of the original creation and is part of the good creation. And so the scriptural evidence indicates that animal death was part of the original creation and that we should understand it as being good, not uh, evil or not the result of the fall. Why is this discussion about animal death before the fall important when we're talking to non-Christians? How does it help me engage them in a conversation about faith? Well, one reason why many people reject uh, the Christian faith or reject belief in God in a more general sense is because they, uh, like young earth creationists, struggle to see how God could be good and also at the same time create a world where there's animal pain and suffering and animal death. And that's why it's really important for us to have a robust philosophical and theological approach to uh, issues like animal death and to recognize that maybe there is a good reason why God would create a world where animal death is part of it. And I think studies in ecology very quickly or, or very easily and readily demonstrate that if it wasn't for animal death, ecosystems wouldn't be stable biodiversity would not be as extensive as it is. So animal death does serve a necessary and good purpose. But it's very important that we have responses to this challenge because this keeps many people away from embracing belief in God and ultimately embracing the gospel. Well, thanks, Fuzz. And I do want to invite all of our viewers to check out Fuzz's blog, The Cells Design, at reasons.org.